Hello, I am Professor S. Shankaran in the Department of Metallurgical and Materials Engineering. So we will go now go to uh, another parameter called tensile strength. That is uh, the tensile strength or ultimate tensile strength UTS, the maximum load divided by the original cross sectional area of the specimen, which is called also called tensile stress, is a maximum load, okay, Max, maximum strength, which is given by SU. Uh, S is uh, engineering stress, U is ultimate, which is V max by E naught. And that is about the uh, strength, and we will talk about measure of ductility. What are the measure of ductility? The conventional measures of ductility that are obtained from the tension test are the engineering strain at fracture, that is EF, usually called elongation, and the reduction of area at fracture, that is U. So, elongation and reduction in area are the two measures of ductility in a material that is actually obtained from the simple tensile test. Both of these properties are obtained after fracture by putting the specimen back together and taking measurements of LF and AF. LF is the final length and uh, after, I mean length after fracture, AF is the area after the fracture. So, which is given by the the formula is this EF is equal to LF minus L0 by E0 which is uh, elongation and the reduction in area Q is uh, initial area that is A0 minus AF divided by AF. Both elongation and reduction area are usually expressed as percentages. Because an appreciable fraction of plastic deformation will be concentrated in the neck region of the tension specimen, the value of EF will depend depend on the gauge length L0 over which the measurement was taken. Very, very important. Just because necking takes place, we will see the importance of necking and what it, uh, you know, how does it uh, determine some of the basic properties or how does it capture the basic properties of the material, we are going to see it. But we are now looking at the ductility parameters. And considering elongation as a ductility parameter is an issue. Issue is what, since the plastic deformation will be concentrated in the neck region, the elongation will depend upon the gauge length L0, okay, which over which it is being it was measurement, I mean over which it is being measured. The smaller the gauge length, the greater will be the contribution to the overall elongation from the neck region and the higher will be the value of elongation. So, there is a bias here, okay, depending upon what gauge length you are choosing. So, it is always important. Therefore, when we are reporting values of percentage elongation, the gauge length L not always should be given. While reporting this without mentioning the gauge length, the percentage elongation will have a biased value. You need to remember this. The reduction in area does not suffer from this difficulty. So, you can say that reduction in area is a better measure of ductility than the percentage elongation because of this, uh, I mean, the gauge length dependence. Reduction of area values can be converted into an equivalent zero gauge length elongation from the constancy of volume relationship for plastic deformation that is AL is equal to A0 L0. We can, we can play around with these relations um, from the constancy of volume relationship. So L by L0 is equal to A0 by A which is which can be written like this 1, one by 1 minus Q and then this engineering uh, strain can be written like this. So L minus L0 by L0 which is equal to A0 by A which is taken from here and a, a naught by a by minus 1 is equal to again this and this minus 1 is equal to this. This represents the elongation based on a very short gauge length near the fracture. Please you have to remember. The other uh, fundamental property uh, which can be assessed by simple tensile test is resilience. What is resilience? The ability of a material to absorb energy when deformed elastically and to return it when unloaded is called resilience. 
This is usually measured by the modulus of resilience, which is the strain energy per unit volume required to stress the material from zero stress to the yield stress sigma naught. The so strain energy per unit volume for uniaxial tension is given by u naught is equal to half sigma x times e x, so stress into strain. Okay. From the above definition, the modulus of resilience is u r can be written like this half into s naught into e naught, which is equal to half s naught into s naught by e which is equal to 2b. Okay. So here, what is this uh, suddenly S0 is coming? So S0 is nothing but the proof stress. What is proof stress? If the material is not showing an yield point, we take something called a proof stress. We will demonstrate it now. How, how do we take the proof stress? The proof stress is considered yield stress. So S is engineering stress, so S0 is a proof stress. So the toughness, so next parameter is toughness. The toughness of the material is its ability to absorb energy in the plastic range. So we were talking about resilience, which is in an elastic range. So this is particularly a plastic range. The ability to withstand the occasional stresses above the yield stress without fracturing is particularly desirable in parts such as freight car couplings, gears, chains and crane hooks. So these are all some of the typical applications where the components will be subjected to the occasional stresses which is above the yield stress. One way of looking at toughness is to consider that it is the total area under the stress strain curve. So you see here the typical um, stress strain plot is uh, shown, one for uh, structural steel and another for high carbon spring steel. You can see both of them, uh, the shaded area shows about uh, resilience and the, the total area under this is the uh, toughness. So for ductile metals which have a stress strain curve like that of the structural steel, the area under the curve can be approximated by either of the following equations. So we can use this uh, approximate equations ut approximate equal to su times ef or ut is equal to s0 plus su by 2 times ef. For brittle materials, the stress strain curve is sometimes assumed to be a parabola and the area under the curve is given by ut approximately equal to 2 by 3. SU times EF. All these relations are only approximations to the area under the stress strain curves. So, these are all very, very preliminary and basic uh, equations or the, the property one can derive from a simple tensile test. This is what we are trying to uh, show here. Okay, we are talking about uh, uh, strength, uh, strength we are relating with uh, yield strength or uh, tensile strength or uh, fracture strength. And we are also talking about ductility, which can be measured by the percentage elongation or reduction in area. We are talking about resilience, we are talking about a toughness, and so on. So now we'll talk about a true stress to strain curve. So why why do we need this in the first place? Okay, what is the definition of a true stress? What is the definition of engineering stress? Engineering stress is load divided by original area of cross section. On the other hand, true stress is load divided by the instantaneous area of cross-section. That means the true stress exhibits a complete characteristic of a deformation behavior of the material right? rather than the engineering uh, stress. So that is how you have to look at it. Okay. So the true stress sigma is expressed in terms of engineering stress uh, from the gain from the volume constancy of plastic deformation. One can derive this very simple, but it can be given, uh, the true stress can be given like engineering stress times engineering strain plus one. The, the derivation of equation assumes both constants of volume and homogeneous distribution. <coughs> Excuse me. 
homogeneous distribution of strain along the gauge length of the tension specimen. So this is very important. So, so what where the where does this homogeneous distribution takes place in the stress strain curve? Up to maximum load. Only up to maximum load, the homogeneous distribution of strain happens. Then up to this point, this can be used. So thus the equation should be used until the onset of necking. So once the necking starts uh, taking place, it is no longer a homogeneous distribution. So these relationships will not hold good. Beyond maximum load, the true stress should be determined from actual measurements of load and cross sectional area. That is sigma is equal to P by A. The true strain epsilon may be determined from the engineering or conventional strain E by epsilon is equal to ln times E plus 1. So, what is shown in this uh, uh, schematic here is uh, engineering stress strain curve together with the true stress strain curve. Okay. The maximum load which is shown is correspondingly it is here in the true stress strain curve. So, this is a fracture and this is a maximum load and uh, you can see that since uh, the true stress, true stress is defined by the load divided by the instantaneous area, as the necking takes place, as the diameter, the cross-sectional area keeps on coming down so that the stress keep on increasing to the fracture. Of course, there is a, a dotted line which is, uh, suppose if, if you try to predict this behavior by some of the uh, semi-empirical relations, there is also a correction for necking behavior is also suggested. So, we will see one by one what is it. Okay. So, these equations is applicable only to the onset of necking or for the reasons discussed above. Beyond maximum load, the true strain should be based on the actual area or diameter measurements. So, which is given by this epsilon is equal to ln A dot by A, which can be uh, related to this. Finally, it can be uh, measured. What is measured is a diameter that is epsilon is equal to 2 times ln D naught by D. So, what is true stress at maximum load? This is again a uh, very simple uh, substitution, but then uh, we need to know this because uh, all these uh, assumptions are valid up to the maximum load. So, you take this expression SU sigma U epsilon u with respect to the maximum load only. We can also, uh, I mean, rewrite this expression. Rewrite these expressions like this. Sigma u is equal to S u times A naught by A u or E u is equal to S into um, epsilon to the power, I mean, E to the power epsilon u. This is another relation. Okay? Uh, derived from this simple simple, uh, simple equations. True fracture stress again uh, is a load at fracture divided by the cross sectional area of the fracture. This stress should be corrected for a triaxial state of stress existing in the tensile specimen at fracture. So, what we can, uh, what we are trying to say is you cannot uh, simply take this value. Uh, we have to take care of the other correct, correcting factors like you know. Uh, correction for necking, correction for uh, triaxial state of stress uh, and so on. True fracture stress, again now true fracture strain which is which is given by epsilon f, uh, true strain at fracture is equal to ln a naught by a f. This parameter represents the maximum true strain that the material can withstand before the fracture and it is analogous to the total strain to fracture of engineering stress strain curve. However, for a cylindrical tensile specimens, the reduction of area Q is related to the true fracture strain by the relationship epsilon F is equal to ln 1 by 1 minus Q. So, I am going little fast because these are all simple uh, substitutions but, uh, but you have to know this all these parameters so that you will not misinterpret when it comes to interpretation. True uniform strain 
very important parameter. What is that? The true uniform strain epsilon u is the true strain based on the strain up to the maximum load. It may be calculated from either specimen cross sectional area AU or the gauge length LU at the maximum load. The uniform strain is often useful in estimating the formability of metals from the results of a tensile tension test. So, you please see that by just measuring the uniform strain, we have some idea about its formability. Formability uh, is a Again, are important parameters in the metal forming uh, applications. So, one can get some idea by measuring this uu is equal to a naught by a. True local necking strain. What is that? The local necking strain epsilon n is the strain required to deform the specimen from maximum load to fracture. So, epsilon n is equal to ln au divided by af. The flow curve of many metals in the region of uniform plastic deformation can be expressed by a simple power curve relation, also known as Holomon equation, which is equal to sigma is equal to k times epsilon to the power n. So, this is quite popular um, empirical relation known as uh, Holomon equation, which is valid up to maximum load in the stress strain curve okay the so where n is the strain hardening exponent k is the strength coefficient very widely used okay most popular and very simple uh, equation so widely used and uh, it is it is not just one uh, expression like this for approximating stress strain behavior there are several of them several of them so we will see a couple of them uh, which is uh, most widely used and uh, in in research people if you go and look at the literature there are n number of uh, empirical relations are uh, done to predict the stress strain behavior of a variety of materials okay so we can uh, one can take any uh, empirical relations uh, according to the material with which you are working or looking for information and then try to estimate all these uh, parameters one by one. Couple of them uh, we will show it in this uh, uh, course. So next thing is what is uh, shown here is uh, how to estimate this uh, strain hardening exponent n so and the k. So basically it is a log true stress versus true strain. So, you, you get that a straight line. A yeah, log of true stress versus true, true strain. You get a straight line like this and uh, the slope will give you the n. A by b is n and this is the k. This is the, the k. For different, what is the significance of n? If n is equal to 0, the stress strain curve will look like this. So, what is the meaning of a yeah, stress strain curve appearing like this? It is perfectly plastic. Okay. And what is n is equal to 1? n is equal to 1 is it's a linear relationship, right? Perfectly elastic. And n is equal to half, it is material undergoes kind of a strain hardening. So, something like that. So this this these are all the this this plots uh, gives a at, at least captures the idea of what is the meaning of n strain hardening exponent very important parameter as I said by measuring n you can relate that to formability of metals and uh, strain hardening ability and so on and so forth we are going to see them one by one. The strain hardening exponent may have values from n is equal to 0, perfectly plastic solid, n is equal to 1, elastic solid. For most metals, n has values between 0 0.10 and 0 0.50. It is important to note that the rate of strain hardening uh, d sigma by d epsilon is not identical with the strain hardening exponent. 
from the definition of n because we are uh, doing a you know a plot of log of sigma versus uh, log of epsilon then we find n as a slope so this can be written like this a natural log sigma by natural log epsilon which can be written like this epsilon by sigma times c d sigma by d epsilon so the d sigma by d epsilon is equal to n times sigma by epsilon so that is what is uh, uh, written here the strain hard ring rate d sigma by d epsilon is not identical with the strain hard experiment so they are very different this relation uh, we will use it uh, later to uh, use this relation to show that we will be able to get the the uniform strain epsilon u can be directly related to n so n can be related to uniform strain epsilon u so later we will show that and this relation we will recall that time okay one common type of uh, deviation is for log log plot of the bow equation holomorphic equation to result in two straight lines with the different slopes sometimes data which do not plot according to the above equation will yield a straight line according to the relationship which is given here so sometimes the uh, holomorphic equation is modified in this fashion that is sigma is equal to k times epsilon not plus epsilon to the power n another common equation uh, is called the ludwig equation like uh, which is reads like this sigma is equal to sigma not plus k epsilon to the power n where sigma not is the yield stress and k and n are the same constant as in the holomorphic equation this equation may be more satisfying than the holomorphic equation since the later implies that at zero true strain the stress is zero okay so it assumes the friction stress at least so zero true strain the the true st i mean zero true strain the stress is zero here so that is what it is the true strain terms in the above equations both equations properly should be the plastic strain actually which is epsilon p is equal to epsilon total minus epsilon elastic which is equal to epsilon total minus sigma by e okay so we are since we are talking about the strain hardening ability the more appropriate uh, uh, strain is plastic strain so uh, we have now looked at uh, two models that is holomorphic equation and ludwig equation uh, these are the two basic models we looked at it we will look at some more uh, model which will describe uh, the stress strain behavior morrison has shown that sigma not can be obtained from the intercept of stress, uh, strain hardening portion of this stress strain curve and the elastic modulus line by this relation sigma not is equal to k divided by e to the power n whole to the power 1 minus 1 by n the true stress true strain curve of metals such as austenitic stainless steel which deviate markedly from the bow equation at low strains can be expressed this type of equation sigma is equal to k epsilon to the power n plus e to the power k1 e to the power n1 times epsilon where e to the power k1 is approximately equal to the proportional limit and n1 is the slope of the deviation stress from the equation plotted against epsilon still other expressions for the flow curve has been discussed in the literature so like i said there are like this several expressions are uh, uh, discussed to predict the stress strain uh, curves of uh, metals and materials okay this all i just brought this here just to give you an idea how people try to interpret this uh, results okay. a convenient model that captures elastic and plastic behavior with the gradual transition from the two was proposed by ramberg and oswood in 1943 as an aid in the design of aircraft i brought one important model uh, apart from these two ludwig and holomorphic i i wanted to present this model because it captures both elastic and plastic uh, behavior together 
and it is also quite popular in the mechanics uh, uh, community very popular model the basic form of uh, romberg and oskood relation reflects the fact that the total screw strain is a simple sum of true elastic and plastic strains expressed in terms of true stress as epsilon t is equal to epsilon elastic plus epsilon plastic which can be written as sigma t that is true stress divided by e don't confuse this with the sigma t this is sigma t means sigma true true stress plus k r o times sigma t by e to the power n r o where sigma t is true stress k r o is romberg osgood strength coefficient n r o is romberg os osgood strength corresponding exponent when the true stress is very low the elastic strain terms dominates and the behavior is nearly linear elastic as the stress increases the plastic strain term plays an increasing role and the slope gradually changes approaches approaching a regime in which plasticity dominates so how do we write this equation it is also possible to introduce an explicit yield strength term sigma y to define a new parameter alpha which is equal to k times sigma y by e to the power n minus 1 so that the above equation can be expressed as epsilon t is equal to sigma t by e plus alpha times sigma y by e into sigma t by sigma y to the power n r o so this is understandable when alpha is written like this and you can write like this alpha times this one so this equation is written like this so what is the benefit there is no distinct yield point on ramberg oskood relation stress strain curve so any reasonable value for the yield stress may be chosen but this choice also determines alpha when sigma t that is true stress is equal to sigma y yield stress the true plastic strain that is offset strain at the yield is given by sig epsilon offset is equal to epsilon times sigma y by e this makes it possible to select a yield strength value at a chosen strain offset such as the often used 0.002 i just mentioned in the a very first introduction of engineering stress strain curve there is an offset yield i mean yield stress that is called also called a proof stress so this is what it is so the the strain axis you mark this point 0.002 value and from there you draw a straight line wherever it intersects the curve that is point 0.2% offset yield strength or it's called proof stress when evaluated for very large plastic strains n r o which is approximately equal to 1 by n so the values of 2 to 5 or even larger are common in practice useful to the in practice useful to write rewrite the ramberg oskood relation so that it more closely resembles the holabond relation by subtracting the elastic strain from the total strain to leave only the true plastic strain so we can write it like this epsilon plastic is equal to epsilon t minus sigma t by e which is equal to k uh, r o into sigma t by e power n r o which can be rewritten like this um, and finally you can substitute uh, into this form uh, sigma t is equal to e by k r o to the power n r o into epsilon plastic to the power 1 by n r o which is equal to k which is equal to sorry h epsilon plastic to the power n the strain hardening exponent n and the strength coefficient h values can be determined from the more conventional ln epsilon t versus ln epsilon plastic plot so this is uh, uh, one way of uh, approximating the stress strain curve again so we will continue this discussion uh, in how to look at this uh, you know total strain in a stress strain curve and from there we will move on so i will stop here now i'll see you in the next class thank you